Bros. This is the All Bros Podcast. I'm Caleb. And I'm Jonathan. We are a couple of aspiring filmmakers that love to watch and critique movies, but also enjoy a lot of bit of the nerd life. Uh, this week on the podcast, we got a little bit of stuff in Adventures in Hunting. Uh, we got a some Hot Topic exclusives, uh, some commons, and then just one like crazy rare figure that's going to be getting release that is going to be damn near impossible for us to find so we're not even going to worry about it no we're not uh we got some blu-rays that are coming out this week not any new movies but no but classics nonetheless classics hell yeah and through the wall news we got our wonder woman 1984 poster got revealed uh we got some news on swamp thing the Dark Phoenix embargo lifted this week, so we're going to have fun ripping that one a new asshole. Uh, then for Rose, <laughs> we got a SpongeBob uh, remastered. Yes, rehydrated. Rehydrated video game and a spinoff series that doesn't need to happen. Then in Yeah, this... I'm not going to argue with you on that one. <laughs> You can't argue with me on that no, one. No, I can't. Then in this week's sneak peeks, we got three new things that we're going to talk about. Not new. Uh, we got a teaser for a Disney's new movie, Onward. Uh, it's Pixar's. Pixar's, no. whatever. Same thing. No. Disney I owns the world. I don't care. Pixar is still its own brand. So don't say they're the same damn thing. Bloody hell. The <laughs> hatred in your eyes. It's it intense. To, I love it. When it comes to Pixar, I don't play, boy. <laughs> okay. Uh, we also got a clip from Toy Story 4 that we're going to talk about and a sneak peek of Child's Play that we're going to discuss a little bit. And then for our main event of the evening, uh, we are going to break down Detective Pikachu. Oh, yeah. Which, obviously, without getting into it super good movie it was it was it was a fun movie that's yeah. like the best way to describe it It was just a really fun movie i don't think it's i i mean obviously we can't get into that but i don't think it's an a movie no it's not but it's it's a solid movie it is. it's a lot better than i expected it yeah to be. same absolute same okay and then that would that's gonna bring us to our conclusion so, with that, let's say we get started. Rose? Oh, sorry, let's let's do it. Sorry, I thought we were just leading on this. I am, but you usually say, I'm like, let's get started, and you're like, yeah, or let's do it, or something. Okay, fine. Let's do it. Is that better? I wish I would have kept my mouth shut. <laughs> <laughs> That's what most people say when I do that voice. First off, in Adventures in Hunting, we got a Hot Topic exclusive Scar that's going to be coming out. Yes. And this one's actually coming with a chase yeah. that isn't nearly as cool as the common is going to yeah. be. Yeah. So I didn't know. So the common is when he's walking through the green smoke, uh, and then the chase is when he's walking through red smoke. I actually didn't even know that towards later in the scene that he is walking through red smoke. Does he? Yeah, he does, actually. That's weird. Yeah. I don't even... Re- yeah, I don't remember I gotta that watch at the, all. I gotta watch The Lion King again now. <laughs> I'm okay with that, though. Oh, darn. Yeah, I know, right? Ah, oh, Darn it. Gotta watch that amazing movie again. <laughs> um, But yeah, no. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is probably gonna be like 25 bucks. Just because it's kind of like a movie moment, in a way. <sighs> Somewhat. Technically, but it's still considered a common. Or like a... Is it like supersized or anything i well i think it kind of has to be with the smoke so like the box has to be a, okay be well bigger. yeah the box has to be a little bigger I, I don't see it going more than 15 i'm thinking 20 i think 20 i don't know because mo- mo- most hot topic exclusives go from 1250 to 15 since this one's going to be a little bit bigger i think then i think it's going to go for a little more okay i can see that yeah 
Um, the other one that we got is Lurch from the Adams Family. Yeah, holding hands. Holding hands. Yes, I love. They should have seriously put Lurch and hands or with hands because he's technically a character. He is he's just not. He's not just an object. <laughs> Come on, Funko. Quit objectifying him. <laughs> uh, the only one. So I love the Adams family. I, I but can't. the only ones I see myself getting are Gomez and Morticia. Really? Yeah. I'm hoping that they do uh, once for when the uh, new animated movie comes out. Because I love those designs of the characters, especially like I didn't at first, but then like going back and looking of how the Adams family actually looked originally, like in drawings and everything, they're they're from like paper to screen, they're perfect. But actually, if I were to get like uh, pops based off any version of Adams family, I would actually want them based off of uh, the people that played them in. Uh, uh, the first Adams family and the Adams family values. I really liked their I, rendition of. I, I love those movies. I love them so much. So I would love to see those um, those versions of the characters put into um, Funko Pop form. That would be awesome. I mean, it's not that much change from what they are now, but still, it'd be a little bit slighter. Right. Slight, it'd be a slight of a change. So yeah, it'd be a bit of a tweak. I mean, you cannot beat Christina Ricci as Wednesday. Um, <laughs> she was just amazing. She was so good. Uh, she was basically born for that. She really, she really was. And I forget who played uh, Morticia. She was great too. Everyone was cast perfectly. Yeah, the kid that plays Pugsley doesn't really act anymore. I could see that because he didn't really act in that one at no, all. I mean, I mean, he didn't really have a lot to do. Actually, uh, I saw this funny thing I'd never even noticed, but in the Adams Family values, when they're Pugsley and Wednesday are going to camp, uh, when um, Gomez is talking to uh, the what's that like preppy girl's dad, in the background you can actually see Pugsley starting to hang himself <laughs> on the tree. <laughs> I was like, oh, shit! I never noticed that. It was, it was a pretty, it was pretty funny to watch. <laughs> Uh, okay, then the other line that we're getting is in, is a disenchantment line. Yes, and Kayla Moore's, knows more about this because I have never seen the show. It's really good. So the only the first season's been released. That's actually not even the first full season. It's the first half of really? the first season. Okay. So the first... We only are getting four of them. Yeah, I guess so. So the first one that we're getting is Bean, which is the main character. The the girl? The girl, yeah. Okay. So hers is just like in her common outfit, not like prin- all princess stuff. Okay. Uh, the next is King Zog. Loving the name. Yeah. Played by John DiMaggio, who's been in most of Matt Groening's. Is it Matt Groening or Matt Groening? I, I don't know. I, Am I, it's G R O E, isn't it? I think so. I say Groening. I always thought it was Groening. I don't know. You think I'd know by now since I grew up watching The Simpsons, but whatever. Yeah, but he's in it, uh, or he's one of the figures. Uh, nothing really special about him. It's just classic he's just holding his uh a sword it, on the ground oh, i didn't even notice that oh yeah he is i thought he was holding his um what, what is it like the this kind of stick that kings always have like a scepter yeah there we go yeah it could be from this distance that's true um the next one we get is elfo which you actually pointed out, you it has a very Bart Simpson vibe. Yeah, just from design. I actually might pick this one up just for the design alone, because he looks really cool. He is super cool. He and then the last one that they have is Lucy, who's like a shadow demon kind of person. But he is actually my favorite character from the series. What is that supposed to be on his uh the bottom of his mouth? It's his teeth. What the shit? He's a demon. But he has him down here? 
Yeah, so it, uh, he's interesting. He's an oddly shaped creature. Uh, yeah, I can t- definitely see that. Yeah, but let me see if I can find like a picture of. I'm getting like a Phineas kind of vibe from him. A Phineas? Yeah. Yeah, like he's always facing one direction or the other. He's never like f- face forward. Yeah, just like Phineas. Yeah. Have you ever seen a picture of Phineas facing forward? Yes, and it's it's haunting. It's, it really is. <laughs> it's terrifying. But really cool line. Yeah. I don't think there's any that I'd pick up. I mean, I'd probably pick up Lucy <sighs> if uh, if the price was right. So like, like eight ninety nine for like common price, or would it have to be lower than that? <sighs> Maybe a little lower than that. Okay. Usually on Amazon, you can catch them for clearance price. So since you don't care about box condition, yeah. There you go. Uh, then moving on to a convention exclusive, Louis Blue Raspberry from yeah. the Otter Pops. Yeah, this is going to be limit to, limited to a thousand pieces. So yeah, there ain't no chance I'm getting this. I don't really want it, um, but I mean it's a really cool pop. It is really cool. The, the Otter Pops are like good characters, but like I wasn't introduced to the Otter Pops until like much later in my life. I'm sorry. <laughs> like I had those frozen popsicles that would like s- scar the sides of your mouth, but weren't those otter pops? Those were otter pops. Yeah. Now that I'm thinking about it, <laughs> I, I you like, just as want... I was talking, I'm like, I'm describing otter pops. <laughs> you just weren't introduced to the actual characters. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was pretty great, dude. Like, no joke. Like as I was talking, it's just oh. These that is Otter Pops. <laughs> you know, unless we're like eating like the knockoff brand, like the great value brand of Otter Pops. Yeah, probably. Uh, so yeah, that covers everything that we got in Pops. There's really not much else to yeah. say about that, unless you got. Well, okay. There's one actually because I don't know if I don't know when this was released, but it's going. It... Oh, is that still on sale? Uh, Cruella Deville and her <gasps> car. Oh shit! And it's on clearance. Well, I don't for know. For fifteen it, bucks? I don't know if it still is. I want it. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> what? No. Are well, you ordering it right now? No. I'm seeing if it's actually still available, and for that that price, because Cruella Deville. You look uh, like a liar. <laughs> no, she's not. Oh yeah, it's still for fifteen. I'll probably buy it after we finish. <laughs> <laughs> well, good on you. Wait until after. Thank you. I was expecting you to buy it, like... Audience etiquette. Well, I'm not, like, dying to have it. It's not like it's a Hawkeye figure. Yeah, sorry. If it was, like, anything Hawkeye, I'd be like, yeah, you take it from here just for a minute. (laughs) Uh, Okay, moving on to Blu-rays that come out this week. All three of the Toy Stories are coming out on 4K and Steelbook. Yes. Um, And they're also getting re-released on Blu-ray. Um... The only difference really this time is unlike when they were released on Blu-ray last time, it was just Blu-ray and digital copy. This time it's Blu-ray, DVD, and digital copy, so I'm glad about that. Um, and then the 4Ks are the 4K plus Blu-ray plus digital copy. Um, they're going off, when it comes to just the regular version, they're going off of what they did with the previous release where it's Woody on the cover of the first, Jesse on the cover of the second, then Buzz on the cover of the third. Um, and then the Best Buy Steelbooks, which they're plain, but I like them. I'll have to show you them after we're done. Um, but the, uh, what is it? So the first one, I believe, has Woody and Buzz in the claw machine. The second has, uh, I want to say it's all four, Woody, uh, Buzz, Jesse, and Bullseye. Um, and then the third just has Woody and a Buzz popping out of uh, a moving box. So, it's simple, but I like them. So. I dig it. Yeah. I better get the codes for those. Because I don't have yes, I don't have the Toy Story movies. Oh, yeah, that's true. You don't. Okay. I think Brielle has the first Toy Story and Toy Story 2 on VHS. Okay, yeah, you have to have all three on them. <laughs> Yeah. Don't worry, I will get those to you then. <laughs> uh, so yeah, then that covers all of our adventures in hunting. Yeah. Moving on to our Through the Wall news. 
Wonder Woman 1984 f- officially has a poster. And, and it, it's weird. It's very trippy on the eyes. It is. It's like really it's hard on the eyes a lot of am i seeing were those like all supposed to be w's or am i just losing my mind i think they're all w's like that's what it looks like yeah that is like whoa okay but it it is it's rough on the eyes it really is and i don't know how i feel about her new costume at least she still got the lasso i the only thing like i can dig the costume yeah it just don't make it gold, like the way it looks. I agree. Like it needs to be colorized f- to be Wonder Woman. Yeah, I completely agree. Like the classic blue, red, and like if the yeah, if they did that, this w- that would actually look really cool. Yeah, like so if the the like where her arms are, where it looks kind of like scaly. Yeah, and then on her legs, if that was like blue, and then like the armor on her legs were red and then the gauntlets obviously stay gold but if everything looked how you would expect wonder woman to look like colorized that would look fantastic that really would i'm like i feel like a a pig of a man (laughs) for being like i like the other one but i I'm, i'm digging the whole like fully covered look yeah like that's i mean gal what gadot should be yeah gal gadot still looks beautiful absolutely well, beautiful duh <laughs> yeah. it's gal gadot yeah but yeah as as long so i'm not upset with this poster or this costume change as long either. as it's not all gold yeah the only problem i have with the poster really is that it's very trippy on the eyes once you first see it yeah, if someone saw that on acid, dude, they would, like, lose their mind. <laughs> oh, that'd be amazing. Let's hope they don't blow that up at the movie theaters. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Hell, speaking of getting blown up, the next bit of news we got, Swamp Thing hey. got canceled after one season. Yeah. Bloody freaking hell. I don't know anything about this character. You probably you probably know a lot more about me, so I mean I've heard from Rotten Tomatoes at least that it's it's a good first season. Yeah, so it hasn't. I don't think it's been released yet. Oh. I think if it has, it's maybe just the first episode. I was gonna say, don't they usually at least wait until the first season's like done before they announce? Before that? they cancel? Yeah, apparently not. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, but like, so I used to watch the Swamp Thing TV show. The one that was from the like sixties. I didn't even know there was a TV. It was the oh, one wait, from, oh like, yeah, the, there was the Incredible Hulk. Okay, yeah, no, I do remember so that. So I now. watched that Swamp Thing show, and that one was a little bit boring for some like a young kid. Yeah, I mean it's boring for adults now, <laughs> but it it wasn't super interesting. But I really liked the character of Swamp Thing. Yeah. Um I didn't do, I don't do a ton of research on DC characters. Um I can't really fall you for that. Yeah. I I I love DC but I'll never love it as much as Marvel. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's exactly where I'm I sitting. I just too. ate my mic. <laughs> um so Swamp Thing is a, a really interesting character and I really like his uh design. Have you seen his design? Yeah, it looks super cool. It looks badass. And then, like, this show is supposed to be following, like, the more horror side of DC, which I'm super, like, yeah, digging. The, uh, yeah, I'm game for that. And everyone was saying that Swamp Thing Season 1 is better than Doom Patrol. It's, like, the best thing DC Universe has gotten, has Damn. released. And I'm like, oh, hell yeah. I mean, I haven't watched Doom Patrol yet, but I really want to because I hear it's so good. Yeah. And I kind of also want to watch Titans. I probably want to watch Titan still out of all of them. Yeah. So, yeah, hearing Swamp Thing get canceled, it kind of makes me want to watch the season a bit more. Yeah. To kind of see if I can figure out why. Yeah. That still sucks. But yet, Bat is it Batgirl or Batwoman? Batwoman. Like, Batwoman. Yet most people are hating that. That's like still pushing along strong. Yeah. It, eh. 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 Yeah. I. No offense to um oh my ah uh, what who plays her again? Rose something. 
Okay. Or isn't Ruby Rose? Ruby Rose, yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, no offense to her, because I think she's a good actress. I'm just not really interested in it, so I never watched the trailer. I never bothered to. I probably should have watched it so we could review it on this podcast. I'm sorry. It has a very forceful feminist really message in uh, the trailer. Oh. It's it's overly pushed. Like I'm all for feminism. Yeah. Like hell yeah. Like take your your spot in the in the uh oh shit, what's the the bat signal? Take your position in the bat signal. Like I'm all for that. But just don't freaking Please tell me didn't someone didn't like take like a red sharpie and draw red hair onto the bat symbol. No. So her whole thing, she finds out that Bruce Wayne is Batman. Okay. And they're cousins. And I'm like, so why didn't he she or he go stay with her? <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. But whatever, I guess Thomas Wayne had other plans. Yeah. But he she finds out Bruce is Batman. And then starts to wear his suit because he disappeared for some reason. And so everyone thinks, oh, Batman's back. And so she wants to change up her suit. She's like, why should a man be getting the credit for what I'm doing? And I'm like, okay. Uh, you could have just gone with, I need a new suit. <laughs> yeah. That's... And she, but she looks really kind of weird in a, in just a plain Batman suit. I don't know how I feel about how the hair comes out. I I can dig the character design. I don't dig a whole lot else. <laughs> okay. All right. Speaking of Batman, it's been officially confirmed that Robert Pattinson will replace Ben Affleck as Batman. Uh, and Matt Reeves has said that uh, when it came to his story, he had no intention of having Ben Affleck be his Batman. Which I'm fine with. Yeah, but... But Bat- Batfleck. I know, but we, we, he jumped the, or whoever cast Ben Affleck kind of jumped the gun on older Batman. I mean, I'm not going to give Rob Pattinson, I'm going to give him the, what's the word? I think he can do a really good I job. I think he can too. I gave Ben Affleck shit when he was cast and I think he did a great job. So I'm going to give. Great's a strong word. Okay. He's one of my favorite Batman. Batman's. Um uh, what is the word I'm looking for? I'm going to give Robert Pattinson uh an opportunity. Uh, uh, it wasn't that word, but okay, yeah, let's just go with that. <laughs> okay. Benefit of the doubt. Oh, there we go. <laughs> there, that's the word. That is the word I'm looking for. So I'll give him the benefit of the doubt just cuz I was too harsh on Ben Affleck when he was cast and he proved me wrong. Um so I think he has the acting chops to. to he do does. It. If if you're not, if basing he doesn't him, bring his Twilight game, I think well, he'll be I fine. Swear, if he does, oh my gosh. Um, but apparently this movie is also supposed to be supposed to be introducing like a shit ton of people. Taylor Lautner is Robin. Oh my gosh, I would die. <laughs> <laughs> no, so Catwoman's supposed to be in this. The penguin is supposed to be in this. Josh Gad is the penguin. Oh, I hope so, dude. I would not be objectified to that. Objectified? I couldn't think of the word there, so that just you, blurted out. You, you couldn't object to that. There we go. Thank you. Objectified. <laughs> no one's going to objectify you, Rose. My brain works differently than <laughs> yours. Okay, <laughs> I can't put together words as well as you can. Yeah, I try. Yeah. So yeah, they're. Catwoman, Penguin are confirmed. Yes. Supposedly, they're going to be introducing Robin again. So okay. I'm kind of excited for that. Bat nipples and all. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! If they do bat nipples, I'm walking out of the theater. With the bat credit card. Oh my gosh! What, what, Shut that? up. What else did George Clooney's uh, Batman add to it? Was that? Well, they the had like skates, the, yeah, or the you know like the bat pelvis and then the bat butt, because yeah. of course you have to have those shots when you're suiting up as Batman and Robin. Yeah, because why not? <laughs> yeah, right. And then supposedly they're also going to be introducing the Riddler. Okay, I'm kind of glad they're not uh, introducing the Joker. 
Yeah, I Joker's. Th- I think it's time for some other Batman villains to get the spotlight. Yeah, I think Joker should always be like if you're doing a series, you should always end with Joker. I completely agree. Like the, it's kind of like what they did with uh Christian Bale, but they brought Joker in in the middle. Yeah, and I think they had plans to bring him into the. Third, they did. But shit happens. But, yeah, sadly. May Heath Ledger rest in peace. Yeah, um, and but I think Tom Hardy did a really good job as Bane. I actually really like his Bane. I did too. I loved his Bane. His voice is a little funky, See, but I really I got like used Bane. to it. You and got used I, to yeah, it. Yeah, and I was fine with it. I actually like it. <laughs> Uh, so speaking of other things that we're not super certain of, uh, Dark Phoenix, the embargo has been lifted. Yeah, and whoo So the biggest thing that, wh- what was it? I don't think it was IGN that pointed out. But so the person that directed this movie has been a producer on a lot of the other X-Men movies. And so they feel that that's why this movie got a... Um, a bad rap, um, just because you got a really good cast. Like the cast that they put um, is great to play these characters. It's just the director and where he's taking the story that's not good. Which, oh, Secret Life of Pets too is now rotten. That sucks. Great. <laughs> Let's see. So Dark Phoenix, it is now at a twenty-three percent. When Caleb and I first checked it, it was at a sixteen. I, t- I screenshotted that shit just so to prove like how low it was. So what's it at now? 23. 23. The audience score is 67. Uh, I honestly expected worse. I was expecting a little worse, but that's... It's still 67 fresh. is around at like a D, isn't it? That's it's like a D, almost a D plus, isn't it? Or is that a D plus? Let's find out. While you do that, I'll read the critics' consensus. Uh, Dark Phoenix ends an era of the X-Men franchise by taking a second stab at adapting a classic comics arc with deeply disappointing results. Fantastic. (laughs) So basically, everything you were expecting this movie to be, it is. Yeah. So 67 is a D+. Okay. Well. Barely passing. Yeah, but it (laughs) passed. All right, let's let's see some reviews here. So Richard Roper uh, says, despite the frequent verbal confrontation scenes in which characters lash out at one another, soap opera style, for lying or serving their selfish interest, Dark Phoenix doesn't come close to carrying the emotional impact of so many Marvel films. Great. Uh, like most good superhero movies, Dark Phoenix operates on two levels, comic book fantastical and psychological. Like most not-so-good ones, it doesn't do justice to either aspect. <laughs> Damn. That might be my favorite review. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> that's, that's pretty This one's pretty creative. Good. The momentum drained out of these X-Men movies long ago, Dark Phoenix should serve as a fittingly... Per- Perfunctory farewell. I think mm. I said that word right. Perfunctory. Uh, I don't think I've ever heard that word. Perfunctory. Perfunctory. I don't even know what that means. Perfunctory. I don't. I don't know what that word means. Yeah. <laughs> Let, should we see if there's any like actual like good reviews? Yeah. <laughs> see if there's any good ones. Uh, let's see. There's none on the first page. <laughs> Expected. <laughs> yeah, did anyone give this a fresh rating? Uh, let's see. Let's see. We got two right here. Uh, as a finale to the series, the resolution is underwhelming and too safe. However, the first two acts, quick pacing, and character choices allow Dark Phoenix to fall fresh. He gave it a B minus. Uh... I feel that's still a little too nice. And that's coming even, from us. <laughs> yeah, I haven't, we haven't even seen the movie, which we will soon. Uh, a compelling origin story that imagines what might happen if an all-powerful super being turned bad instead of good. Uh, oh, gave, so basically like, like every single supervillain? Yeah, basically. Gave it a three cool. out of five. <laughs> yeah, like, how do you c- imagine that that's creative? What if a bad or a good guy went bad? So, 
a super villain origin. <laughs> right? Because no one ever starts off bad. I mean, yeah, you're not I'm wrong. I'm not excited to, to break that movie down. Yeah. Anyway. So. Moving on to something kind of better. Wait, really quick. I want to see what the critic... Because it's rotten now, I wonder if... I want to see if they change the uh, critics' consensus for The Secret Life of Heads 2. Because I've heard one reviewer, uh, Grace Randolph, from Beyond the Trailer, said that it literally feels like two... No, three shorts. You know, like how Illumination will do the shorts? Oh, shit. Just put into a movie, and she feels it doesn't deserve to be a movie, let alone be The Secret Life of Pets 2. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, the Secret Life of Pets 2 doesn't teach its animated stars any new narrative tricks, but for fans of the original, this funny, energetic sequel should still satisfy. So, it has a 56% right now, but the audience score is 94. Damn. Really? Yeah, damn. Look at that. That's that's weird. That is maybe it is a little maybe it might be a bit better than the critics are giving it. It might be. I'm gonna check it out on a five bucks Tuesday. Go, I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna go off of what you tell me. Okay, all right. But I'm still probably gonna go see it on like a five dollar Tuesday. Yeah. Moving on to talk about SpongeBob, the yes. SpongeBob Battle for Bikini Bottom. Is getting a remastered or rehydrated is what they described it as. Yes. A video game. Yes. And this is for all consoles? Yes. Um, yep. Uh, and I can't freaking wait because I grew up with the original. It was such fun. Did you ever play it? Battle for Bikini Bottom? Mm-mm. Oh, dude, you missed out. Oh, my gosh. So, like the best SpongeBob game ever made. I kind of got turned off to SpongeBob games because of the, oh, what was that one with SpongeBob, Danny Phantom, Nicktoons Unite? Yeah, I got turned off to SpongeBob games because of that. Why? Because SpongeBob was so freaking hard to control. All right, I'll give you that. Yeah, he was a pain in the ass in that game. <laughs> I hate any time I got on a SpongeBob game, I'm just like, well, f it, and then I would like throw my. Game. Dude, honestly, in that game, I think Patrick was probably the hardest to control. I only played it on the DS. Oh, sorry, no, sorry, not in Nicktoons Unite. I meant uh, SpongeBob Battle for Bikini Bottom. Oh, because you had to play as SpongeBob, Patrick, and Sandy, I believe, for those the three. And I think Patrick was the hardest out of the three to control. Yeah, well, Sandy was Nick, also with the most Nicktoons badass. Nicktoons Unite, it was SpongeBob. I always went for. I was always Jimmy, so I didn't really play as SpongeBob a lot. Yeah. I avoided playing as SpongeBob. I hated the missions where I had to like blow bubbles and try to jump in them as SpongeBob because he's so slow. <laughs> and then it's his like jumping freaking sucks ass. <laughs> uh, and then you couldn't switch to Timmy fast enough, and then it was just a freaking nightmare. Oh, this got me on a rant. <laughs> you you need to take over. Okay, so. I, I mean, I don't know if uh, they're going to be basically redoing the whole game. I kind of hope they are, just because like this game is like practically perfect in every way. Um, just fix a couple of the bugs. But yeah, like I honestly remember when you had to uh, like fight the big like the mission. I remember the most is when you have to fight the big gigantic robot version of Patrick. And I remember because he was a pain in the ass because he kept shooting acid at you, <laughs> and I could not get out of the way fast enough. Mm-mm. Oh my gosh, this is not a game that I see myself getting. Oh, Do you, you see your, you getting it? Yeah, duh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna relive my childhood with this thing. Fair enough. Speaking of other things that are unnecessary in the SpongeBob world, hey, a rehydrated version of Battle for Bikini Bottom is not unnecessary. <laughs> <laughs> it's very necessary. I think a lot of people could argue. About that. We should do a poll. We should. <laughs> I'm going to post that poll. The entire poll should just be SpongeBob Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated. Yeah. Is necessary? It ne- or unnecessary. You're probably going to win on this one. I just feel it. Probably. Yeah. Shit. Uh, so, like I said, unnecessary SpongeBob. 
we are getting a new spin-off series of SpongeBob called SpongeBob Camp Corral. Or it's Coral. Coral, not Corral. <laughs> I'm dumb. <laughs> Just a little bit. Can't read. Camp Coral. There you go. And Rosie, you take it. I can't. So... <laughs> <laughs> it's basically going to be, a, so it's a spinoff of SpongeBob when he was 10 years old and he was at Camp Coral. Um, do, do I hear young Sheldon? <laughs> yeah, no <'Cause>... shit. <laughs> but I enjoy young Sheldon a lot. I think it's a really good show. Um, so I'm interested. Um, I'll, I'll watch it. I'm not. They I just better. Br- I know he's ten, but they better have a Tom Kenny still playing the voice of SpongeBob. Well, he played the voice of Baby SpongeBob in all those flashbacks. That's a very good point. So yeah, so he should hopefully come back for it. But can can it be SpongeBob and Patrick at camp? Because I just want to see ten year old SpongeBob and Patrick. Like, come on, <laughs> that's like that'd be awesome. Then the show ends with him moving into the pineapple there you go i was joking rose Uh gosh damn (laughs) don't play me when it comes to spongebob uh i'm not excited for this apparently you are i'm i'm interested i'm not excited i'm interested Uh, Um, okay so i just because i don't so we talked about it a couple weeks ago but i don't think we brought it up that has been officially confirmed that we are getting a remastered uh, version of Ghostbusters the video game. We talked about that last we time. We did. But didn't we say PS4 hadn't been officially announced? No, it was officially announced the day that we recorded, I'm pretty sure. It was? Pretty sure. Oh, my bad. <laughs> well, if we didn't talk about it, yeah, it's it, it's coming later this year. So, my bad. Moving on to this week's sneak peeks, we got a kind of a teaser more yeah so, it was more so a teaser for a new pixar movie thank you onward yes featuring chris pratt and tom holland yeah and i cannot be more excited for that I, yeah i can't either i'm very interested i think it's cool that pixar is uh going back to original works instead of doing uh sequels because i want to say that they said uh they're stopping with sequels for like the next like ten movies. Good. It's it's gonna be a while until they do another sequel, which I'm totally fine with. Dude, their original content, like Coco, came out of nowhere, was fantastic. Mm-hmm. Inside out. Inside out? Yeah. Hell yeah. Like all that original stuff is just incredible. Um uh, not all of it. A good dinosaur? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe and, that one and, wasn't super great. And s- I didn't hate Brave. It's not as bad as The Good Dinosaur, but I didn't love it. Uh, yeah, Brave was... Eh. Yeah. All right, whatever. <laughs> but the good... The, s- the more modern yeah. original content has been amazing. I, yeah, I completely agree. And I have fairly high hopes for Honor. I do, too. Especially seeing Tom Holland and Chris Pratt together. That's going to be awesome. That's going to be so cool. Very excited about Is that. Is this the first movie where they've done or done like a focus on brothers i'm pretty sure wait i gotta run through all the pixar movies now <laughs> i'm pretty sure it is i, I can't think of yeah, anywhere it's been a focus on brothers it's always been like the hero's story or them with like the sister with frozen yeah that's disney not F- pixar whatever forget you <laughs> 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 Disney, like I said, owns the world. It's basically the same thing. They may no, they may do that, but Disney still has their own animation studio. Does Pixar ever release something that isn't Disney related? Well, oh, I didn't think they, so. They can't because Disney's name has to be included on it. Exactly. It's basically the same. No, thing. it's not. You know, there's another poll we can do. <laughs> Dude, this entire week's just going to be poll after poll after poll. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, Disney might own Pixar, but Pixar's still its own damn thing. Oh, whatever. Dumb. <laughs> You're dumb. 2018 release. Pixar's was Incredibles 2. Disney's was Ralph Breaks the Internet. 
completely different. I can't keep track of that. I didn't shit. love either, but <laughs> that's well, kind of sad that I didn't love either of them. Anyway, <laughs> I am excited for them to do a focus on brothers. I am too, because being someone that only has brothers, that's not something I've gotten to see from a Disney movie. Yeah, where the brother isn't killing the other one, like Lion King. <laughs> Yeah, very true. Uh, we also got a clip from Toy Story 4 that is borderline terrifying. Yeah. Benson, the ventriloquist dummy, is pr- pretty creepy. Is the thing of nightmares. Yeah. Especially when he just uh, picks up uh, Woody and Forky and just throws them into a... Uh... Oh my goodness, what is... Uh... It's like that carriage, the baby carriage yeah, thing. No, uh, what's the doll's name? Gabby Gabby throws her into her carriage. Um, so off about this trailer is like when Woody's like talking to her, she's kind of like looking because he's behind her. Him and Forky are in front of this uh, kind of like, what is it? Like an aluminum plate or something? Uh, Yeah. yeah. It's just a, a shiny, clear plate. Yeah. And so she's like looking in the back and we're just like, what the hell is she looking at? And, uh, Brielle, Kale's wife, pointed out that it looks like he's ju- she's just looking at his pull string. Yeah. I don't know why, and I don't want to know I want to think it's like that plastic loop or something. Yeah. I, for <sighs> That better be explained in the movie. Yeah, we better get context. Yeah. I mean, obviously, if we're going to, if they're putting that much focus on it. Yeah, true. Um, Best part about this, though, is when Forky refers to himself as trash. That was pretty funny. <laughs> that was pretty great. Uh, so, Forky's really grown on me. I don't hate him as much as I used to. Neither do I. Ducky and Bunny are still my favorite new characters, just because it's Key and Peel. Absolutely agreed. Um, but I'm I'm interested to see what what they do with Forky in Toy Story Four. But I'm more so, of course, out of everything, I'm most excited to see the original gang back. Well. Yeah, after that that clip. Yeah. It didn't really bump me up either way. It I mean, I'm I'm pretty on the nose of like I'm excited to see it, so it didn't bump me down or bump me higher. Well, the one that I'm most excited to see is Child's Play, especially after the sneak peek that we got. Yes. Cuz oh, that Mark, would be terrifying. Mark Hamill. Amazing. Absolutely. You can, see, you can hear a little bit of Brad Dorf in him, which I love. I appreciate that. So he's keeping it somewhat original Chucky, but he's still giving it his own. Yeah. So I love the concept of him being able to communicate through all of those different devices. Right. Like he so was awesome. talking out of uh like a police car that was made by this company. What yeah. was what's the name of the company? Uh Caslin. Caslin? Yep. Yeah, so the Caslin like police car and then like the speakers and then the tv base or the the thermostat even yep. all these different things he's able to communicate out of because chucky connects to all of these devices and it is terrifying it is it is a terrifying thought i'm like i'm so glad i, I can't afford a smart home <laughs> right <laughs> now i'm just glad that no one's really made a a, a smart doll oh sh- <laughs> shit no um but I love that uh, it's even Mark Hamill's voice uh, coming out of the doll when it's just in doll form. He's not in Chucky form. Whereas in the original, it was a different voice than Brad Dorif's. So I love that. And you can even tell that it's still Mark Hamill's voice when he says, are we having fun now? You could kind of understand. Like, with the way that they took Chucky in, with the original, you kind oh, of yeah. understand why it wasn't oh, yeah. the same voice. Oh, completely. But this one definitely justifies them using the same voice. Yeah. And I was fine with that, that it was different. It made it, it made more sense, like, especially because the other voice is a lot more kid friendly. I mean, I'm sure Brad, <laughs> I'm sure Brad Dorf could do it. Um, it would just, I don't know how kid friendly, oh, I don't know. Can Brad Dorf do a kid friendly voice? Probably not. <laughs> no offense to his work. He's an amazing actor. Yeah. I'm just um, not betting that he could be <laughs> child friendly. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I cannot wait to see what they do with this re- reimagining. I don't call it a remake because they are changing a lot. Right. So I'm excited to see what they do with this reimagining of Child's Play. Yeah. We're like, so... what, three weeks away? 
think it's about that. Three so, weeks from this and Toy Story 4. So one out of three with these three movies. Uh, One, Child's Play. Yep. Two. Oh, shit. I already forgot the name of it. Onward? Onward. I'm sorry. Thank you. Uh, and then three, Toy Story 4. Dude, me too. Hey. I, was, I thought you were going to disagree and say... Uh, Toy Story Four is number two. No, the clip didn't like the clip's good, but I liked the teaser a little more. I do too. I think I'm just mostly excited to see some more original content. I am too, and I love the designs. The design is like really cool. It definitely reminds me of Frozen. Yes, but I think that's okay. Like it kind of reminds me of the 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 trolls. Yeah, from Frozen. I would agree, but it works. So yeah. Okay. It's not. It's not like Disney can sue Pixar, you know. <laughs> You're dumb. <laughs> Pretty good joke, though. Thank you. Okay, moving on. Uh, I mean, like I said, that covers all of our news in this week's sneak peek. So let's say we move on to the main event. Let's do it. It's time. Time for the game. Let's play game. Okay, this week's main event of the evening, we are going to do a breakdown of Detective Pikachu, which we saw on Tuesday. Yes. Definitely a surprise of a movie. It was. The only problem with this movie, I think we picked the worst showtime to see it. Oh my gosh, freaking... <laughs> Children running up and down the stairs, dropping their popcorn everywhere. It was just wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, let's get back to the movie. Yeah. So I posted a, like, before we get into it, uh, we're going to do uh, some message from the bros. So I posted this question on Facebook and Twitter. And I haven't heard back from anyone. Not I got even, a shit ton of... Not even Vic? Vic. Not even Vic. Vic. <gasps> yeah. Blasphemy. What in the hell? <laughs> uh, so yeah, we got a shit ton of like likes on that on the, uh, the question, but no one's freaking <laughs> answered it. Well, shit. Yeah, so... There's a lot that I feel are bots. Uh, no doubt. Because they're like, oh, started Facebook in 2018. <laughs> and they only have like one profile picture. Yeah. That but then there's some that are like from 2019 or not 2019 that started it earlier. Like you could, they look more like real people. Hmm. But we got like 22 people that thumbs up and hearted us and gave uh, the <gasps> face some people hearted it yeah <gasps> they do love us <laughs> yeah but none of them answered sad so i had to go to one of the actually so <laughs> i had to go to other sources to get an answer for this week okay mm -hmm. so i've been uh I messaged from the Garbage and Gold podcast. Oh. I messaged Lisa okay. from that and said, hey, you need to answer her question. <laughs> Do you say it just like that? Like, you need to? You yeah, demanded I'm, it? Yeah, I said, so what's, I told her like what the question was. So our question was, what's your favorite Pokemon, and what did you think of their live-action representation if they were in the movie? So she almost didn't answer because she hadn't seen the movie, and I'm like, just give me your favorite Pokemon. <laughs> And we'll call it good. Yeah. Because I need at least one. Because <laughs> Vic failed us. Yeah, freaking Vic. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah. So, her pick for her favorite Pokemon was Machop. I don't know who that is. Are you serious? Yeah. You know, so Machop, is, like, it's the strongman Pokemon. Oh. The one that, like, has, like, that weird gill thing or fin thing on his head so there's oh, i was like thinking machop, of a different pokemon there's Mach machoke was he even in the movie machop yeah i don't i don't know see if machop him. was in the movie i don't think i, saw I know him. Mach 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 M
in Rhyme City. Oh yeah, I do remember him. Speaking See, of that's which, who I was spoiler thinking. Spoiler alert. <laughs> a little late for that. Yeah, just a little late. All of our reviews are spoilers. So yeah, Machop, I don't remember seeing him. Uh are yeah. you Googling if he was in it? Yeah, it's only showing his um uh his evolution form. Not evolution. Yeah, just but but champ. Well that sucks. Yeah. I was kind of hoping that Machop was in it. I was too, because I think he'd look really cool in live action form. Yeah. Machop, or Machamp looks a little rubbery. Yeah. Like, especially with, there. like, all the other Pokemon. They actually have, like, fur or, like, the leaves or scales or something that you can look at. Machamp looks very, very rubbery. I did not think that Snorlax was going to be that fuzzy in... To take a Pikachu, but it worked. Yeah. So, yeah, no, ma- no Machop. That's that's lame. Yeah, I'm I'm looking around to see if I can find a Machop, but no Machop. Bummer. I mean, there's a some art of what he would look like, and he looks kind of weird. <laughs> okay, maybe it was a good idea that they left him out of the movie. <laughs> well, they did Machamp just fine. That's. Okay, that's a good point. But I really like Machop as a as a Pokemon. Yeah. For the most part, I'm amazed how well uh, almost every Pokemon transitioned to live action. Mm-hmm. Was there any that you like didn't like? Not really. Not that I can think of. Like most were very uh, what's the word? Um, true to their original design. Yeah, I agree. Pikachu looked the absolute best. Like, I loved how Pikachu looked. Well, yeah, they can't mess Pikachu up. I mean, he can with how much fun he is. Well, you can, but you shouldn't. <laughs> True. I feel that like he's the title Pokemon. If any, I feel, I'm amazed um, how well they were able to pull off a Charizard. Same. Charizard, I feel, is a hard one to do. Charizard is definitely but a hard one to pull fantastic. off. But he looked fantastic. I loved how Charizard looked. Yeah. Well, thank you, Lisa, from Garbage and Gold. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> For being the only person that answered. <laughs> <laughs> good answer, though. It was, a, it was a good Pokemon. It was. Too bad we didn't get to see him, though. Yeah, lame. Bummer. Okay, moving on to our actual breakdown. So if you're new to our breakdowns, we split the movie up into a bunch of different categories. Um, story, writing, acting, character development, the music, the effects, the costumes, and then an overall genre grade, which we decided this movie is like a, a mystery adventure. Yes. And like we said, really good movie. So let's start off with story. A little plain for me. It it is definitely it is a plain story, but I feel they threw in a lot of like fun aspects they, of they it. They did for as how, how plain it was. They definitely made it work, and they added uh, stuff to not make you too not bored, but like think to yourself, "Oh my goodness, how many times have I seen this before? Like I'm gonna fall asleep." Did you feel like you were gonna fall asleep? During no, this? not at all. But you, just the story. Yeah, just like oh. um... You know, someone is, uh, someone's gone missing, but someone thinks that they're still alive. We got to go find them. I, I definitely agree with you there. It is kind of just a real basic, like, flatline story. Nothing too interesting about it. Yeah. All, like, all the fun was, I think, was thrown into, like, the writing. Yes. But the story, what didn't hold up no it didn't. i mean towards the end i mean i did not expect them to do what they did even though caleb saw it coming i did but not until like really late in the movie <laughs> yeah i did not expect it until uh the words were spoken that it actually happened i'm like well i feel stupid for not catching <laughs> on to that <laughs> yeah which we'll get into a little bit later yes um so it just follows the story of oh shit uh, what Justice Smith, but I forget his character's name. I did too. 
They didn't really... T- oh, it's Tim. Oh, yeah, Tim. Thank you. Yeah, so it follows the story of Tim. And it shows in the beginning that he's struggling with, like, loneliness, I guess. Yeah, because most of all of his friends uh, from, like, his high school days or college days kind of, like, moved on with their lives. They've moved out of his, like, hometown. So he doesn't necessarily know where he wants to go. He like. Uh, he likes his job, but he knows that it's kind of like a dead end job. It seemed, um, and it's kind of like see, what? Uh, what is his name? That uh, what he was uh, his friend at the beginning. I don't remember his uh, name. Great actor, by the way. Uh, he plays um. Oh my gosh. What is what is his name in Deadpool? Dopinder. Dopinder. Thank you. Shit, is that a reference, Phil? Point. Yeah, I'll fail you. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> oh, speaking of fails, quick. I lost. So this is I? the yeah you did. This is the first one of June, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So you failed. Expect your prize next week. Booyah! <laughs> one to two. Shit. Yep. So I'm starting off strong. Yeah, you are. So now <laughs> it's zero to one. Damn it! Okay. Um, so the guy that plays Dope Hinder in Deadpool and Deadpool 2, um, he's kind of like the last friend, uh, that Tim has in town, but he's leaving as well. Um, so, uh, it was, it was honestly like really sad to, uh, see this kid, uh, Tim's story. And then like, you know, he gets the phone call that his dad was in a tragic accident and he passed away. And it's interesting seeing how much, uh, not having his dad around and also hearing that news affected him emotionally because for most of the beginning, you can tell he, he is probably dealing with a little bit of depression. Right. So. Uh, he, he just has a thing against Pokemon. Like, he, or it's not really that maybe it's the companionship that he was. Yeah. I think against. that's what it is. Because his friend tries to get him to capture a Q-Bone, and they, he thinks that they're just going out to have a good time. Yeah. Like, how like their days were. And I loved how they designed the Pokeballs. Oh, those were amazing. Those were so freaking cool. I'm oh. so glad, Matt, that we didn't get to see more of those. I am too. That sucked. But I just love the line where, what does he say? It's not green yet. It's not green yet. Why is it not, not green yet? <laughs> <laughs> isn't that, isn't that the color that you said? Yep. Okay. Oh shit, that was a really good scene. Just where he's pit, like when Cubone pops out, and I'm yeah. like, oh shit's about to get real. Especially when he hits the ground and it like cracks the. Floor. Yeah, it really shows you how hard it can be to catch a Pokemon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, freaking Pokemon Go. <laughs> Gosh, I hated catching Pokemon in that game, dude. Like that. That scene alone made made up for that. We didn't get to see like a a real like uh Pokemon capture or hunting or anything like that. Yeah, it, that scene alone made up for it that did. because it felt like so much fun. Yeah, and I loved that. Like, oh, like I after this movie, I would not mind like a live action Ash Ketchum story. That'd be pretty cool, right? Espe- like especially with that Pokeball design. I mean, this movie was mildly successful, so see what happens. Yeah, I hope they do. They do more. That'd be f- fantastic. It would. I completely agree. But grading the story, like you, we said, it's a little bland if you just kind of stretch it. If you just stretch, like air dry it yeah (laughs) take out like all the fun parts yeah and like the fun aspects of it it is just a real basic story just which i think worked for what they were trying to do it did i completely agree so it can't be like super duper harsh on it yeah but the story was bland so i'm thinking like like 80 oh i was thinking 75 75 i can I can do 75. Okay. I'm not against it. Like, I was trying to be a little nice because it was fun. I'll be nicer on the other subjects, so can we give it a 75? I can do 75. Okay. 
Because that's really the only low subject I have for it. Right. The low grading subject. Okay, Category, we, whatever. Writing. I feel the writing was pretty strong in this movie. There were some there were some parts with and it was definitely not the, like the actor's fault. No. It was definitely the lines. Yeah. That were out of place. They just felt they awkward. Like it's kind of like a whole no one really says that situation. Yeah. Uh this might be like uh well I don't know. Did you feel when it came to like Tim and the what's the girl's name? I don't know. These the characters aren't that rem- I can't really remember the characters all that well. I mean, did you feel like the writing between them was good? Not really. Yeah, I completely agree. Like the, the it was only when they were conversing that it felt really weird. Yeah, I mean everything that they wrote for Ryan Reynolds as Pikachu was fantastic. There was a there were only like two lines really? that he I said can't... that I was like, eh. Lucy. That was her. Hmm. Catherine Newton. I didn't know that was her. She's off. Uh, remember Paranormal Activity four. Oh yeah. Remember main girl. Really? Yeah, the blonde. Yeah, that's her. Oh shit. Learn something new every day. So, with the writing, like I said, there was a lot of like weird interactions. I can't remember. Right off the top of my head, what those interactions yeah. were, but it was just things, especially with things with uh, between like Tim and his friend, things that people don't really say. I'll give you that; it did get awkward at some moments. Yeah, and it wasn't the actor's fault. No, I feel Justice Smith did amazing. He but did. That's I'm gonna leave for the acting credit. Yeah, <laughs> skipping ahead here, man. Come on. Yeah, just a little bit. What are you feeling for writing? Like an 80? I can give you an 80. Or are you thinking higher? No. If I was, maybe just barely higher. I think an 80 is a fair score for it. 80's, yeah, 80 is fair. Okay, moving on to acting. I'd say we do Ryan Reynolds, okay. for sure. Justice Smith, and... The girl? The girl. What was uh, her name? Catherine Newton. Catherine Newton. Yes. So that's only three? Yeah. Is there anyone else that you feel we should grade? Not really. Okay. I mean, we could... Uh, what was his name that played uh, the bad guy? Spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> really? He's not in, like the main cast? I don't necessarily... Bill Nye. Him. Bill Nye? Yeah. Bill Nye? Okay, I don't know. It's the Bill Nye that you're thinking of. It's the, the, the uh, this one. Is his name Bill Nye? Yeah, it's Bill Nye. Bullshit. Uh, bull, yes, shit. I will be damned. <laughs> That's not how I would say his name. <laughs> how would you say it? I don't know. Bill Nye? 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 I don't know he might How do you pronounce say like, it. <laughs> I swear he he's pronounces it uh Nye. That's weird. Huh. Okay. Bill yeah. Nye. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to do him? What do you think? It's up to you. <sighs> he wasn't really a big part of uh, it. That's true. Yeah, let's keep so, it to the main three. Okay. So Ryan Reynolds as Detective Fan-tastic. Pikachu. Fantastic. Yeah. Fan freaking tastic. Like, I told Caleb after the movie finished, surprisingly, I did not see Ryan Reynolds at all. I just saw Pikachu. And I didn't think that would happen because he didn't change his voice at all. Yeah. But it's he still made the character his own. Yeah, which is so weird to think. Like, that he doesn't change at all. Like, I thought the entire thing I was going to be like, oh, that's Ryan Reynolds. Oh, that's Deadpool. Oh, that's this. That's that from all his other roles. Yeah. No, I just saw Pikachu. (laughs) Yeah. It's weird. (laughs) And... Yeah, like all the lines that he did, he delivered amazingly. Mm-hmm. Um, the motion capture that they pulled off on Pikachu's face. Yeah, it was fantastic. It was amazing. Yeah. Um, Ryan Reynolds, as per usual, is freaking hilarious. 
uh, like I said, there was a couple lines between him and Tim that were, eh. I'll give you that. So I'm thinking 90. I was actually thinking 95. 95? Yeah. Want me in the middle? Yeah, 92 or 93. 93? Deal. Okay. All right, Justice Smith. I think he did amazing he in this did. role. He absolutely did. I loved him in this movie. Um, Was there anything... A lot of the, the lines that he delivered that were awkward were just... I think he did really well at making it not... <laughs> He did. Even in it was like, definitely the other person that was making it. Awkward. Yeah, I mean, even in the emotional scenes, he was great. Like when uh, he's talking to a Pikachu of how like he really wishes that he would have gotten on that train, and like you see like just like a couple of those like single teardrops. Like I didn't almost cry, but you know you, you feel for him. You really do. Mm-hmm. And like I know this is like the same thing, but the relationship between a father and son is kind of similar to the relationship between a mother and daughter. It there's just something there. Yes. That's that makes it a little it makes it different. Like I know I have a much different relationship with my dad than I do with my mom. Yeah, I'm the same one. And it's I don't know what it is. Like I can't put quite put my finger on it. I can't either. Like yes, my dad is my is a parent but i'm a little bit more different around my dad than i am with my mom and i can't put my finger on it like can could you with your like maybe i'm just crazy no you're not because i feel the absolute same way yeah like there's just something with fathers and sons and mothers and daughters and i feel like this show or this movie did really well with that with showing the son struggle with the father. Yes. And kind of growing from it too. And he like Justice Smith did incredible. Yes, he really did. With that. Uh all the awkward lines were really not from him. Like yes, he said some things that were just kind of like, "Oh, what?" But he pulled them off really well. Mm-hmm. It was just like I said the other person that did. Yeah. <laughs> that didn't Deliver their stuff the same way. Agreed. So, what are you thinking? Like a 90? 90? Is that too high? I was oh, actually good. thinking a little higher. Really? Yeah. Same as Reynolds? Maybe a little lower than Reynolds. Maybe like 91, 92. All right, I'll get 91. I could do 91. Okay, and Lucy. I feel this is going to affect the character score a lot. It is. <laughs> Maybe we shouldn't have included her. Yeah, but she played a, a yeah, significant role. When she first got introduced to the movie, like as the character, she was just out there. I thought she was Team Rocket with how like flamboyant she talked. Oh, that would have been amazing. <laughs> I wish she was now. Yeah, so... Uh, I have a really yeah. hard time with her. There were some, like, that were definitely parts where she shined. Yeah. And then there were just, like, these weird moments. Like, the introduction where she was just super just out there and just just awkward. But that wasn't a consistent thing. Like, if it was more consistent, I could see myself giving her a better score. Yeah. But it but, wasn't. Yeah, she did a 180 in the movie. Like oh. she did a three sixty because she Th- went from true. that awkwardness to like someone that's a little bit more relatable, and then near the end went back to someone who's like really weird. <laughs> yeah, and then don't get me started on her Pokemon. Freaking Psyduck. <laughs> <sighs> oh wow, I'm thinking not super high for her. I'm not either. What are you thinking? Like a is a seventy too nice. <sighs> No, it's not. I'm. Are you thinking lower? Like what's no not I, being nice? What's your score? I don't know. I think seventy. Actually, I would stick with. I would probably go with seventy-two. Wait, seventy, comma two. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, we kind of got to clarify on that shit. <laughs> yeah, huh? no, yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Uh, Sorry, 
right? So 70. Yeah, 70 it is. So that brings our character or our acting score to an 84. Damn. No, Unless you want to round up to an 85, because it's 84.6. Can we? Okay, we can. For Ryan Reynolds. Up. For Ryan Reynolds. And Justice Smith. We can round up to 85. Character development. I think this one we could we should only focus on on the two. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um I feel definitely out of the two Justice Smith got the most um cuz it was definitely interesting seeing him go from someone that absolutely like hated his father like uh, as a kid he wanted to stay with his grandma um didn't really want anything to do with his dad after his mom died to towards the end of the movie when he's telling Pikachu, like, you know, I really wish I got on that train because I don't think I really knew my dad. Yeah. It's, well, that was more Justice Smith's development, right? Yeah, the, yeah, that's what I was talking about. Oh, I thought we were talking about Pikachu. Sorry, no, I was, no, I was talking about Justice Smith. Yeah, Justice Smith, yeah, definitely. He, you kind of see him kind of go through that regret a little bit. I think it's more he's a little bit more indifferent at the in the beginning. Yes, I agree. Um when he's just going to his dad's apartment and going through the stuff, it's it's more like an indifference. It doesn't really feel like someone that lost a father. It's very true. It wasn't until he started investigating the disappearance of his father and all this other crazy stuff. And then gets in trouble with the police. Was he the chief or the captain? I, uh, he was one of those. I think he was the captain. Let's go with that then. So if he gets when he gets in trouble with the captain, and then he's just like, "Dude, your dad's dead," and then that's I think that's when it really hits him. Yeah. And then, you d- yeah, you definitely see that growth. That growth is just an incredible thing and it, it stands out a lot more in a movie that doesn't have like a super crazy story like it shows that like what you can do with like a real basic story but then like really good growth so i think we're going to be pretty even with whatever we pick yeah so what are you thinking definitely in the 90s i'm sitting there too I'm sitting at like 95 for yeah, his. that's what I'm thinking. Okay, and then what about Pikachu? Okay, so I feel to like add more to his character development, I think we do need to give the spoiler away. So this is a huge spoiler alert, like huge for this movie. But it turns out that when um, Tim's dad died, uh, Mewtwo, who we actually never even talked about in this review... Yeah, uh, was well, sp- it's, it's, he's someone that I feel we could get into with, like, effects. That's true. Um, but Mewtwo basically takes uh, the dad's, um, what, what would you call it when you, like... Like, consciousness? There we go. They, he took his con- consciousness and put it into Pikachu. So, basically, towards the end, Tim's like, oh, shit, Pikachu's my dad, in a, in a way. <laughs> Um, Which kind of softly explains why he could talk, yeah, but not could... enough for I'm... it to like completely make yeah, sense. Yeah, I mean, and it makes sense that Tim was the only one that could understand him because that is his dad. But so I think that definitely adds to the uh, character development of Pikachu because I feel that's really the only uh, character development he gets is like. Towards the beginning, he's kind of just like, you know, I lost my memory. I don't know what the hell happened. All I have, the hint I have, is uh, your dad's name on this uh, detective hat and uh, his uh, old apartment address. Um, That's really all the context you're given with Pikachu. Um, They do a really good job at hiding who Justice's dad was. They did. But I also feel like we were lied to at points, because I'm pretty sure we saw his hair yeah. at times, and it did not match up with Ryan Reynolds' No, it did hair. not. Uh, yeah, because uh, this like threw me through a loop, because I don't know why, but until like 
towards the end when Ryan Reynolds like gives J- uh, Tim a ticket and he's like, oh, actually, can I stay with you for a while, Dad? And I'm just like, wait, what? Because I thought like Ryan Reynolds was just like a, f- a friend of the family or something. I don't know why this didn't click. But yeah, That's so- when it clicked? Yeah. Not when Mewtwo was just like, yes, you brought the son to me? After it- explaining that... He- Wait no, maybe are you it did. shitting me? Wait, maybe it did. <laughs> wait, maybe I'm losing my mind. Okay, wait, Rose. No, no, wait. Okay, no, no. What you're saying is right. I'm sorry. I forgot that scene for a minute. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm sorry. Thank you for clearing that up. So I'm not as stupid as you think I am. Oh my god, I was about ready to like punch you. <laughs> It's like, are you shitting me? Now, if this that's was... when you realized, oh, maybe this is his dad. Now, if this was live and you punched me, that would be freaking hilarious. <laughs> um. Okay, uh. so yeah, that's when it hit me. Yeah, I'm not as stupid as you think I am. <laughs> I mean, let, let, <laughs> let's beg to differ here. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna shut up now before I shove my uh, foot more any more down my throat. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh yeah like Mewtwo did this whole explanation he's just like your father's been with you this entire time and then he separated you're just like the only thing okay. that didn't make sense with that and I think we ac- accurately graded like this was one of the things in writing was it never really explained why he could talk to Tim it didn't. That's true. Um, and it never explained why Tim needed to be in the vicinity of his, of Harry for Mewtwo to do the separation. That's a good point. Like yeah, I understand, maybe do in it, the like sequel. Yeah. Uh, I what I know. thought that they were originally going to do with him being able to communicate with Pikachu. Was so when he was open that capsule with the that weird purple substance, the R. Yeah, I thought that he was going to inhale that, and that it was going to, or then like Pikachu was going to be walking by when it like, like was leaking out, and maybe he inhaled it, and then that's why they could communicate with each other. Oh, okay. Oh, I could see that. I mean, for, throughout the movie, you, you keep wondering, like, okay, why is Pikachu the only Pokemon that isn't affected by that? But at the end, when it's discovered, oh, your dad's been living in the body, that makes sense. Does the, he, did he ever make direct contact with that stuff? Because uh, I don't think he did. I want to what was it? Because all the other Pokemon had to have it, like, directly in their face. Pikachu didn't really have to. Yeah, but when it's released in a... Um, when it's released in that arena, basically every single Pokemon was hit by it. So I'm pretty sure Pikachu w- would have gotten some of it. Well, he was on the way. balloons. No, in the arena. Oh, like in when the he's arena? fighting Charizard. Oh, that's true. I didn't so, even think about that. So that's the only reason why I can think of that he what he didn't go uh crazy is because he had basically had a human living inside of him. Huh. That's an interesting thought. I'd have to go see it again because yeah, I, I want to see it a second actually, time now. I want to go see if he he makes any direct contact with that. But with Pikachu, or with Harry as Pikachu, he does have his own growth in a way. He does. I mean, other than like gaining his memory, I think I like the moment where he thinks that he betrayed Tim. Yeah, that was... I did not see that coming. Dude, I thought the exact opposite was going to happen. I thought Tim was going to be super mad. Yeah, that's what I thought too. But no, it was Pikachu that was like super guilty about yeah. it. And I'm like, that's a twist. Yeah, that was and a good I twist. And I really love that. Yeah, I did too. So yeah, kudos to our writers for that. Th- that was impressive actually. Yeah, I... Oh, definitely. I freaking loved his... When they like that argument between them, and he's just like, "How do you know that that's not the person I am?" And he's like, "I feel it in my jellies." <laughs> that uh, ongoing joke was that, freaking that was, great. That was great. 
or when he says, like, I feel it in my, say it, say jellies, <laughs> bones. Well, that doesn't sound right. <laughs> <laughs> I actually think Detective Pikachu's development was a little below Tim's. It is. I completely agree. He doesn't get to go a lot of uh, places as much as Tim goes. but Because I, of the amnesia. The amnesia yeah. is the thing holding him back. I agree. And so it's fine. Um, but I'd probably give him like like a ninety, or maybe like I'm gonna give him a little higher, maybe like a ninety two. Okay, I'll give you that. Okay, so that brings our character development score to a ninety three and a half. Uh, moving on to music. I really liked the music in this. It was yeah, it was really good. I really thought it was smart how they were able to incorporate the video game music. Yes, that and then was just awesome. change the tempo up and like to fit with different moods. Would it have made you smile if just in the background they were playing uh, the Pokemon theme in the uh, battle arena scene? I think they played not during the arena scene, but I think they played it a couple times they did? during this movie. Yeah, damn it, I gotta go see this movie a second time. Yeah, now. we need to go see it again because yeah. I need to point that shit out to you. Okay. Because I, I remember, love it when I remember can hearing do this. that song. Yeah, I just remember when Pikachu's singing it all sad. <laughs> That's the only time I remember it being in the movie. Oh my god, I love that scene. The I want to be the very best. <laughs> so great. Uh, but yeah, so I lo- loved how they were able to incorporate the video game music, like I said. And the theme song, like the original theme song. Yeah. So, I felt like the music was actually exceptional in this. It was. I completely agree. I'm trying to think of if there was any like songs that didn't fit with this. I can't think of any. I can't either. Like I know that there was like the dubstep thing that those one Pokemon was doing. Yeah, but it worked. It did work for that situation. Yeah. Like, with them going wild and them just doing crazy shit. Yeah. Making the, like, just noise. Yeah. Dubstep definitely fit for that. I hate dubstep with a fiery passion. I do, too. But it fit with... Not in that the, context. With the tone of the scene. Yeah. Yeah. I'm thinking 10. I am, too. Yeah? Yeah. Definitely. All right. Okay effects they're pretty damn good they like, were super solid damn like bravo to like, the special effects team why can't they make sonic look as good as these pokemon do? exactly is exactly. it really, is it really that hard because like from this they make it look like a walk in the park like flawless yeah i want to i'm curious like you keep talk. like we'll keep talking about it but i'm gonna I want to look up the the budget for this movie. It's in the 150. Is it? Yeah, it was like 150 million. Hmm. I think it definitely shows because the oh, the designs looked fantastic. The fur looked amazing, like on Pikachu, Snorlax. Uh, what 150 million. Jigglypuff. Yeah, everything looked amazing. Yeah, and with a 150 million dollar budget. That's not terrible. That's not terrible at all. Let's see what else. Um, I mean, Ralph breaks the internet had a hundred and seventy-five million. Damn, Endgame had I think I think Endgames was three hundred. <laughs> that that's understandable. Yeah, definitely understandable. Let me see if they have like a list. So like movie budgets. Okay, so I'm tr- let's see, let's see what else had like a hundred and fifty million dollar budget. Uh, Suicide Squad had a hundred and seventy five million dollar budget. Up had a hundred and seventy five. So for a hundred and fifty, you this is somewhere in the realm of Terminator Genesis, uh, Wonder Woman. Frozen, Zootopia, Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, Goblet of Fire, Moana, Hancock, Ratatouille, Thor the Dark World, 
Batman Begins, the first Thor movie, X-Men Origins, Wolverine. This knocked all of those special effects out of the water, I feel. Yeah, I completely agree. I mean, there were like, some exceptions. <laughs> animations, not, we're not counting animation right now. Because you can't really top up, Zoot- well, no, sorry, Zootopia, Moana, Frozen. Those look those look amazing for even just 150 million. Yeah, I'm actually amazed that that's all that costed to bring those to life. Yeah, like Madagascar two. Oh, okay. Um, Ready Player One had 150 million. That's it for that movie. That was it. The Last Airbender had a 150 million dollar budget. Bolt G Force. Yeah, they it blows all of these out of the water without even trying. Yeah, like because there was no, there was no effect. I mean, there was some, there was like a couple like moments that I had a little issues with, but it was only at the beginning when the, um, when the Pidgeotos are flying, those looked a little. Uh, yeah, those looked fake. out of place. Yeah, I'll, gr- but I'll give you. Other that. than that, everything else looked. Flawless. It did. Completely agree. Like, I actually felt like those were there. Yeah. And the detail, too. Like, on Charizard's Seriously, face, though. all the scales, and, like, you saw it, like, with his lightning scars. That was badass. Yeah. And then all the Charmanders that we saw, all the Squirtles, the Bulbasaurs. Ah, uh, Bulbasaurs looked beautiful. Yeah. Damn. So effects, I'm just to dock for like the one moment that I saw. I'm thinking ninety five. I am too, absolutely. Okay, costumes. I feel like costumes were weren't great in this. Mm, weren't they just regular human clothes? Well, th- yeah, they were. Okay, but uh, I don't know. With Tim switching to like a leather jacket from wearing like just a button-up shirt with a tie. Eh. Well, I mean... Lucy's clothes could be felt really style. weird. Tim's, I could... I was fine with. Yeah, Lucy's were kind of all over the place. Yeah. I'm thinking, like, eight for that one. I'll, I'll give you that. Um, I'm also considering, like, the that ditto chick. Oh, yeah, with the pink gloves. The nightmare fuel. That is oh, the ditto gosh. eyes. <laughs> And that was, like, I loved that whole thing with the Ditto. Yeah. Because I, like, in, you, you watch the show, right? Yep, you remember Ditto. Yep. Like, sure they always do. said that the only thing that Ditto couldn't copy was the eyes. Yep. So they, like, always had to cover them up or whatever. And, oh, my gosh, it was beyond creepy whenever he transformed. And just the, the Ditto eyes, dude, are, like nightmare fuel like i told you the told you uh it reminds me of Coraline a little bit oh my gosh i think that's worse than Coraline, <laughs> to be honest I'd ha- yeah i'd have to agree with you because i'm not scared of the Coraline eyes at all yeah those definitely do scar me for life oh my gosh yeah so like i said eight yep agreed okay and then finally as a mystery adventure um, I think it got the adventure down. It did. The mystery. I mean, you saw it coming before I did. So, but like... it, not till like super late, though. Okay, true. Once, like, I didn't realize that it, like the the twist until they said that Mewtwo had the power to combine or combine the bodies of Pokemon. If oh, okay. the if the Pokemon either like accepted or was willing to, or gotcha. if they were wild. Okay. So, like, that was actually a pretty good span of time that I didn't know. It wasn't until the last, I think, 15 minutes that I didn't piece wow. it together. Okay. So, what are you thinking? I'm, like, at an 85 or a 90. I'm sitting at, like, an 85. Let's go with 85, then. I'm, fi- I'm fine with that. Okay. And that brings us to our final grade... Which is a B plus. It is sitting at an eighty seven percent. I think that's rightfully deserved. Yeah. It's one oh no it's not. 
though. It's barely above Captain Marvel on the the grading scale. Okay. Which I'm I'm actually okay with. I am too. Yeah. So just above Captain Marvel. Um I think this movie had a lot going for it. It, it was did. super fun. Definitely out of all the the video game movies that I've seen, definitely the best representation. Oh, absolutely. It's in a way I feel it was better than it should have been. Yeah, definitely. Um, like we said, the story, if you think about the story, it's a little bland. But there was a lot of like the fun aspects that they threw in that made up for that. And I feel it worked in their favor, like having just the basic story and then just throwing maybe, like what it seems like. They threw all their money into effects and that made to to create like an amazing world. Oh yeah, Rhyme City, where most of this movie takes place, because that's where, uh, basically Pokemon and humans live in um perfect harmony. Well, never said per- no, perfect, whatever. Uh, the way the city looked and how it was, uh, how it worked for both humans and Pokemon was was amazing. It was truly amazing. It was, and we got to see a lot more Pokemon than I thought. Yeah. No kidding. I thought it was going to be like, oh, like here's this one big scene of all these Pokemon, like the introduction to Rhyme City. And then it was going to be like, okay, now we're in like this little building where we get to see one or two. And then this little area that we get to see one or two more. But no, there was a lot of scenes where we got to see a lot of different Pokemon. Yeah. And I loved that. Like it, nothing, it felt like they just shot a movie without considering what like the budget was going to look like where they just shot it and they were like okay now fill this with pokemon <laughs> yeah and they're like they okay like, yeah <laughs> and they did amazing with they, that they really did um i really liked like the smaller details like mr mime his that was <laughs> oh when tim uh uh like you know like fake opens the door and everything just his face he's like oh shit someone caught on to me <laughs> Um, I really liked his design where his shoulders were like the dodgeballs. Yes, that was so awesome. Like you could hear his shoulders. Yeah, <laughs> you, you could. It was great. It was oh, so good. Yeah, it's not a perfect movie. No, not if you're going there for like a really deep story, you're not going to get it. You're going to no. be disappointed. But if you're going there to have a good time, you're going to have one hell of a time. And what I really liked about this movie, you don't need to know a lot about Pokemon. You don't. And I was honestly surprised about that. Yeah. Like, my knowledge base of Pokemon is very limited. Mine is too. Like, I know the basics. Like, most of the, I know the original 150. Plus Mewtwo and Mew. Other than that, I my knowledge is just garbage. So they made it really easy to just kind of follow what was going on. They really did. And I really appreciated that. And I feel this is a movie that anyone could enjoy. Yes. So highly recommend. So go check it out for sure. Definitely worth the watch. You don't have to go see it on a $5 Tuesday. No, it's definitely, it's worth full price admission. Yeah. All right. Well, I think that wraps up. Our breakdown of Detective Pikachu, unless you got anything else to add. No. I think that's it. Cool. Um, as always, if you like this episode and want to check out more, you can subscribe to us on either iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Radio Public, or Spotify. Finally took off SoundCloud. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, screw you, SoundCloud. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Just make it cheaper. <laughs> like, that's the only thing that's holding me back, really. Uh, uh, you can also check out all of our content on YouTube. Uh, new videos will be heading your way yes. soon-ish. Ish. Now that we are in a new setup, we can finally get those intros and outros filmed. Damn right. Yes. Um, you can also follow us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash the All Bros. Or on Twitter, uh, our handle is at the All Bros. Um, if you have something you want us to discuss in the next episode, 
a movie we should see, be sure to email us at the Albros channel at gmail.com or you can fill out our form on our website, which is tinyurl.com forward slash the Albros. Um, next week, we are going to break down Aladdin. You can tell Caleb's so excited. I, I've heard, this is what I'm getting. Some people are like loving it, and then everyone else is just like, eh, this is all right. Uh, I feel like I'm going to be comparing this to the animated one a lot. I probably will, too. Yeah, so that's going to be the downfall from from that movie from from me at least. It's but, going mean, to be a little hard for me to be biased. But on, like, definitely don't unbiased. like when it comes to like you know like Will Smith's version of Genie. Don't compare him to Robin Williams because you can definitely tell he's trying to do his own. He's not trying to do an impersonation of Robin Williams, which I actually appreciate. I'm glad that he's making it his own. I'm going to have to leave like everything at the door with Aladdin. That's like, everything what I know I've heard. About, what? That's honestly what I've heard. That They're just, just like, kinda... maybe lower your expectations a little bit. <laughs> you know where your uh, your level's out of 10? We need you down to like a 5. Yeah. A strong it's, 4. It's like, you know where uh, you're at like the Jungle Book kind of level? Maybe bring it down to uh, Cinderella. Or maybe a little lower than that. Like Beauty and the Beast? Yeah, there we go. That's a better, <laughs> yeah, that's a better example. Yeah. So, look forward to that next week. Um, but until then, this has been the All Bros Podcast. I'm Caleb. And I'm Jonathan. And we'll catch you guys next week. Deuces. So long. Gosh damn, every freaking week. Oh, my throat killed after that. <clears throat> I'm good. <laughs>